Saturday. I worked this morning, ground some stumps, gave my son the day off because we worked really hard, the longer hours this week. He's been a champ. That was week number nine. And I'm telling you, I guess it's like playing video games. He's getting with my hydraulic controls. He's getting really good at it. And um, I'm very happy. Okay. We're back on the Vermeer SC252 stump grinder. It's got a Kohler 27 horsepower on it. And one of my viewers and buddy off of Facebook, I've never met him before, but um, his input is great. His name's Steve. I'll put his name in the comments and credit before this. You, you will have seen it. Um, all you guys that, that send me stuff and tell me what filter you're running or whatever, we're, I'm step by step I'm making videos and passing information on. I'm learning about a machine that I used to own and it changed a little bit, a little bit of mods. You know, like it, mostly the stuff that changed is uh, the electrical controls and the circuitry on it and stuff that they put on for safety reasons. All right, it complicated a machine that was very simple. But that's another story. All right, today I bought a small little instrument. It's a tachometer off of eBay. No, Amazon, I'm sorry. You'll find them on eBay too. But the one I bought is off of Amazon. It was about 12 to $16, give or take, delivered to my house. Came in two days. I bought it. There's a more expensive one out there that's like 50 60 I'll buy it later because I didn't find it till later and it really looks nice. I'll do a review of it later. But this one is a simple, cheap one. Basically, you take a, it's a small little tachometer and you wrap the, a wire, I think five loops around your spark plug, and your spark plug wire, excuse me, and it, it ducks through it and tells you the RPM, translates it to RPM from your spark plug's firing. And it comes with like simple instructions. You know, I mean, you could complicate stuff, but this is just a simple deal. And the very first ZT uh, 1844s had a very similar cheap little uh, hour meter that came on them and it would fall off because they held on with double edge tape and between weather fuel and power washing they fly off the new ones the SGs they changed that and they they mounted a, uh, an hour meter and stuff in a special deal you know us first guys we learn we buy products and then they figure out what falls off they improve it and we're the ones that take it in the rear but <laughs> that's just me so, we're going to go outside, we're going to use this tachometer. Uh, some people say it's 3600 RPM. Uh, we're going to be doing stuff one-handed right, once again. But here it is, this little light box plastic. It's got a battery built already in it. And it's a tachometer. And it's also an hour meter. Okay. Now, it comes with a long cord. You run the cord. It's right here is a spark plug wire and it's wrapped one two three and then four coming across so I got four four wraps oh, yep four with the other one tucking in is five okay so let's start up and see where up it has accuracy it says up to plus or minus 10 rpm it is pretty good for 14 15 dollars the motor was warmed up for about two minutes. There we are, we're at RPM of 1,000 and it's fluctuating. stuff one-handed right, once again but here it is 
this a little light box plastic. It's got a battery built already in it. And it's a tachometer. And it's also an hour meter. Okay. Now it comes with a long cord. You run the cord. It's right here. Here's a spark plug wire. And it's wrapped one, two, three, and then four coming across. So I got four four wraps. Oh, yep, four with the other one tucking in is five. Okay. So let's start up and see where we're up. It has accuracy, it says up to plus or minus 10 RPM. It is pretty good for $14, $15. The motor was warmed up for about two minutes. There we are, we're at RPM of 1,000 and it's fluctuating. Seven fifty. We're off about what? Three hundred RPM. So yes, he was right. We're not at full RPM. We'll come around the other side of the engine. And see where our adjustments could be on the Kohler. Do do do. Right there. We have a screw right here. We'll make an adjustment and we'll see where we're at. I'm not okay. I can't adjust it while filming, so hang with me and I'll make some adjustments a tiny bit at a time and we'll see where we're at. Let's see if I can get at 3750. All right, I know it's loud, but I want to let you know something. I'm using a quarter inch ratchet, a long extension, and 930 seconds. A little bit of soccer. some confusion on the internet about some guys running these at 37 or 3750 not these machines but these engines on different applications but I looked up the maximum torque spec for this motor it produces its maximum torque at 3600 rpm okay so that comes from the Kohler site itself and not from somebody pulling a rabbit out of his rear end so that's what I'm going with and once again, we got this off of Amazon. I'll put the link in there. It's a very, very cheap tool, very easy to set up. Okay, you can put it on this side or this side. I put it on this side. That way I could access and see at the same time I'm making the adjustment. Okay. So, very simple for you to do. For probably fifteen to sixteen dollars, you got a tool that you could use on your lawnmower, on your chainsaw, and we're using it on our stump grinder today. All right. So, like I say, I, I checked out the specs and some specs given to me from other guys. Maximum torque on the Kohler Command Twenty Seven horsepower is produced at thirty six hundred RPM. All right. So. Like I say, I need your guys' help, so wait a few minutes. I'm going to go back in the shop, and I need help. 
and I'll tell you what I need help on. And if you have a 252, you're the guys to help me. I need you to use a stopwatch and time something for me. All right? All right, we're back in the shop. The machine's outside. It's freaking 90 something degrees out there. So I made it, I'm back inside. I'm a little wet from sweating. But I wanna say thank you to all of you guys that keep sending me information on the machines and what to adjust it to, what speed, this, that. I need your help on something else. I need the swing speed from left to right or right to left, whichever one. I need one cycle, either that way or that way. And use your phone as a, you go into clock mode or your phone as a stopwatch. Top. What I got on mine is 3.53 seconds. That's how long it takes to go from left to right or right to left, okay? That's what I got. So I want to know if I'm in the proper ballpark. Okay, I want to know. There's tons of you 252 guys out there, and I'm relying on you to give me some information. And you know, hey, then you're gonna be part of this. All right, and this whole thing is about maintaining and fixing your own machine. So, um, sorry dealers. But, now well, we still need you, because there's custom parts special underneath that you can't buy anywhere else, and you know, unless I find them. All right. Enough of that. I just want to say thank you very much to all of you. And one more thing. I looked at the demographics of the age of people watching these videos. And apparently there's a lot of young guys, like from, you know, early 20s to late 20s and then 30s. Um, and then it jumps all into, you know, the 40s and 50s. But it's a lot of young guys. So uh, I need a favor from you guys. All right. I did this for my son a long time ago. When he started working, I opened him up what's called a Roth IRA, right? I know a lot of guys, oh, but I don't know, Adam, I don't know what to wear. It's so simple. There's so many different investment companies on the internet that, that allow you to open up this account, right? Look up the definition of it. Uh, I've made videos about it before, but I'm particular, I'm stickler about this because you're going to be my age before you know it, all right? You will be, all right? If you're not a... a working somewhere that you have a pension plan, you need to start your own retirement plan. Social Security, forget about it. That's just going to be something we heard about or we used to think about or whatever. Um, so, Roth IRA, and you say, well, Adam, I don't have any money to really be sticking back. Well, let me tell you something. I started an IRA for my son a long time ago when he started working. But then, I also insisted he open up another account on his own. The first week he worked for me, okay, Every Saturday, I'd give him a bonus. Say, oh, Adam, he was to give him a big bonus. No. Oh, Adam over here gave him a bonus just for one thing. His bonus was here. Take this. 20 bucks. Okay. 20 bucks. $10 goes to an emergency fund. I want you to build that emergency fund up to $1,000. All right? The other $10 I'm giving you a week goes to your Roth IRA. Okay. So he opened it up with a company called Fidelity. Took no money to open it, opened it up. I said, once you get a certain amount in or whatever, then you'll be able to start buying, and I'll suggest to you what you buy, ETF. So I know it's all over your head right now, but don't worry. Right, there's plenty of other companies you can invest in. Roth IRA. So $10 a week he's doing. That's $40 a month. All right. And another $40 a month is going to an emergency fund. So, if you got a hustle, a side gig, whatever you got, changing brakes, mowing lawn, I don't care what it is, or you worked overtime for this week, can you come up with can you come up with ten dollars? Put five dollars in your Roth IRA and five dollars in your emergency fund, or ten dollars in Roth IRA and ten dollars in emergency fund. Can you come up with that? Because I know you came up with it during the week at McDonald's or some place like that. Okay. You know, you can do it. You know, I don't want to hear this word from you. This one word in my world pisses me off more than you know. My wife uses it, and it pisses me off. You want to know what the word is? It's a magic word. I wish. If you're watching this channel, I want to hear the word I wish out of you. I wish sucks. You know why? 
all the people I've met in my life. I wish I would have invested like you, Adam. I wish I would have bought that. I wish I would have put money back, Adam. I wish I would have bought an old Mustang back in 1969, a boss. I wish, I wish, I wish. All the people that wish never get anything done. You don't wish. You do. All right? You dream. I like the word dream. All right? Because... There's a positive aspect of dreaming and there's a negative aspect of dreaming, okay? The positive is, I go to bed at night and I think, how do I fix that in a dream? How do I fix it? How do I make that? How can I make some more money? Where can I put this? How do I build that? In my dreams, that's what I do, okay? I don't, I wish I, I wish I won a million dollars. I wish I had the money up. Oh, Please, with that wish. Well, every guy I know had ever wished, a woman I ever knew in my life that said, I wish, I wish I looked like her, I wish I looked like him. The reason why that guy looks that way that's got freaking arms from hell or whatever is because he did it. He got up in the morning or evening and pumped iron all day long. All right? He, he did it. You know? And then people hate us guys that do or us women that do. It's the, it's the I wishers that hate the people that did it or are doing it, all right? So I wish, you wish that in that vocabulary. If your kids start saying, Mommy, I wish for Christmas, don't wish. Don't wish. You can dream about it, and how do you get it? Like a kid, what are you going to do to get that? You know, kids want bikes, this, motorcycle, whatever. Right? You tell your kid. What steps you got to do to get that? Right? How are we going to get that? I'll work with you with that. You know, Dad, I'm, you know, I want to go to college. I want to become this. All right, what steps do we do to do that? That's what I want to know. I don't want to say I wish I was a doctor. I wish I was this. I wish I was in Dixie or yeah, whatever. So remember, erase that word. I wish. We're doers on this channel. We're doers. All right. And if we don't know something, we go to somebody that knows. And if someone wants to be a prick and not tell us how to do it, there's somebody out there that'll be nice to us and tell us how to do it. Okay? All right, sometimes I don't know it. I call my brother. I say, hey, how the hell do I do this? And he'll say, hey, you know, I'm not sure myself. Or I know. I'll come over and show you, you know. If we don't know, he says, hey, I think I know somebody. I'll call him. You know. Anyway, God bless you. Be safe. A lot of crazy people out there, right? In our world, in our shops, it's nice and safe. In our house, it's nice and safe. Make it a wonderful place for you and your family. Love you. See you in the next one.